Do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters, with all purity. Honor widows who are really widows, but if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents, for this is good and acceptable before God. Now she who is really a widow and left alone trusts in God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives, and these things command that they may be blameless. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Do not let a widow under 60 years old be taken into the number, and not unless she has been the wife of one man well reported for good works. If she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work. But refuse the younger widows, for when they have begun to grow wanton against Christ, they desire to marry, having condemnation because they have cast off their first faith. And besides, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things which they ought not. Therefore, I desire that the younger widows marry, bear children, manage the house, give no opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully, for some have already turned aside after Satan. If any believing man or woman has widows, let them relieve them, and do not let the church be burdened, that it may relieve those who are really widows. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all, that the rest also may fear. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things without prejudice, doing nothing with partiality. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. Some men's sins are clearly evident, preceding them to judgment, but those of some men follow later. Likewise, the good works of some are clearly evident, and those that are otherwise cannot be hidden. The Book of Ezekiel Chapter 39 And you, son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and I will turn you around and lead you on, bringing you up from the far north, and bring you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will knock the bow out of your left hand, and cause the arrows to fall out of your right hand. You shall fall upon the mountains of Israel, you and all your troops and the peoples who are with you. I will give you to birds of prey of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. You shall fall on the open field, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. And I will send fire on Magog, and on those who live in security in the coastlands. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. Then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out 
and set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and bucklers, the bows and arrows, the javelins and spears. And they will make fires with them for seven years. They will not take wood from the field, nor cut down any from the forests, because they will make fires with the weapons. And they will plunder those who plundered them, and pillage those who pillaged them, says the Lord God. It will come to pass in that day that I will give Gog a burial place there in Israel, the valley of those who pass by east of the sea. And it will obstruct travelers, because there they will bury Gog and all his multitude. Therefore they will call it the valley of Haman Gog. For seven months the house of Israel will be burying them, in order to cleanse the land. Indeed, all the people of the land will be burying, and they will gain renown for it on the day that I am glorified, says the Lord God. They will set apart men regularly employed, with the help of a search party, to pass through the land and bury those bodies remaining on the ground in order to cleanse it. At the end of seven months they will make a search. The search party will pass through the land, and when anyone sees a man's bone, he shall set up a marker by it, till the buriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. The name of the city will also be Hermona, thus they shall cleanse the land. And as for you, son of man, thus says the Lord God, Speak to every sort of bird and to every beast of the field, Assemble yourselves and come. Gather together from all sides to my sacrificial meal which I am sacrificing for you, a great sacrificial meal on the mountains of Israel, that you may eat flesh and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty, drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams and lambs, of goats and bulls, all of them fatlings of Bashan. You shall eat fat till you are full, and drink blood till you are drunk, at my sacrificial meal which I am sacrificing for you. You shall be filled at my table with horses and riders, with mighty men and with all the men of war, says the Lord God. I will set my glory among the nations. All the nations shall see my judgment which I have executed, and my hand which I have laid on them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Because they were unfaithful to me, therefore I hid my face from them. I gave them into the hand of their enemies, and they all fell by the sword. According to their uncleanness, and according to their transgressions I have dealt with them and hidden my face from them. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Now I will bring back the captives of Jacob, and have mercy on the whole house of Israel, and I will be jealous for my holy name, after they have borne their shame and all their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me. When they dwelt safely in their own land, and no one made them afraid, when I have brought them back from the peoples, and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and I am hallowed in them, in the sight of many nations, then they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who sent them into captivity among the nations, but also brought them back to their land, and left none of them captive any longer. And I will not hide my face from them any more, for I shall have poured out my Spirit on the house of Israel says the Lord God. Chapter 40 In the twenty-fifth year of our captivity, at the beginning of the year, on the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year after the city was captured, on the very same day the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he took me there. In the visions of God he took me into the land of Israel, and set me on a very high mountain. On it, toward the south, was something like the structure of a city. 
he took me there, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of bronze. He had a line of flax and a measuring rod in his hand, and he stood in the gateway. And the man said to me, Son of man, look with your eyes and hear with your ears, and fix your mind on everything I show you. For you were brought here so that I might show them to you. Declare to the house of Israel everything you see. Now there was a wall all around the outside of the temple. In the man's hand was a measuring rod six cubits long, each being a cubit and a handbreadth, and he measured the width of the wall structure one rod, and the height one rod. Then he went to the gateway which faced east, and he went up its stairs and measured the threshold of the gateway, which was one rod wide, and the other threshold was one rod wide. Each gate chamber was one rod long and one rod wide. Between the gate chambers was a space of five cubits, and the threshold of the gateway by the vestibule of the inside gate was one rod. He also measured the vestibule of the inside gate, one rod. Then he measured the vestibule of the gateway, eight cubits, and the gate posts, two cubits. The vestibule of the gate was on the inside. In the eastern gateway were three gate chambers on one side and three on the other. The three were all the same size. Also, the gate posts were of the same size on this side and that side. He measured the width of the entrance to the gateway, ten cubits, and the length of the gate, thirteen cubits. There was a space in front of the gate chambers, one cubit on this side and one cubit on that side. The gate chambers were six cubits on this side and six cubits on that side. Then he measured the gateway from the roof of one gate chamber to the roof of the other. The width was twenty-five cubits, as door faces door. He measured the gate posts, sixty cubits high, and the court all around the gateway extended to the gate post. From the front of the entrance gate to the front of the vestibule of the inner gate was fifty cubits. There were beveled window frames in the gate chambers and in their intervening archways on the inside of the gateway all around, and likewise in the vestibules. There were windows all around on the inside, and on each gatepost were palm trees. Then he brought me into the outer court, and there were chambers and a pavement made all around the court. Thirty chambers faced the pavement. The pavement was by the side of the gateways, corresponding to the length of the gateways. This was the lower pavement. Then he measured the width from the front of the lower gateway to the front of the inner court exterior, one hundred cubits toward the east and the north. On the outer court was also a gateway facing north, and he measured its length and its width. Its gate chambers, three on this side and three on that side, its gate posts and its archways had the same measurements as the first gate. Its length was fifty cubits and its width twenty-five cubits. Its windows and those of its archways and also its palm trees had the same measurements as the gateway facing east. It was ascended by seven steps and its archway was in front of it. A gate of the inner court was opposite the northern gateway just as the eastern gateway. And he measured from gateway to gateway one hundred cubits. After that he brought me toward the south, and there a gateway was facing south. And he measured its gateposts and archways according to these same measurements. There were windows in it, and in its archways all around like those windows. Its length was fifty cubits, and its width twenty-five cubits. Seven steps led up to it, and its archway was in front of them, and it had palm trees on its gateposts, one on this side and one on that side. There was also a gateway on the inner court facing south, 
and he measured from gateway to gateway toward the south, one hundred cubits. Then he brought me to the inner court through the southern gateway. He measured the southern gateway according to these same measurements. Also its gate chambers, its gate posts, and its archways were according to these same measurements. There were windows in it, and in its archways all around. It was fifty cubits long and twenty-five cubits wide. There were archways all around, twenty-five cubits long and five cubits wide. Its archways faced the outer court. Palm trees were on its gateposts, and going up to it were eight steps. And he brought me into the inner court facing east. He measured the gateway according to these same measurements. Also its gate chambers, its gate posts, and its archways were according to these same measurements. And there were windows in it, and in its archways all around. It was fifty cubits long, and twenty-five cubits wide. Its archways faced the outer court, and palm trees were on its gate posts on this side and on that side, and going up to it were eight steps. Then he brought me to the north gateway and measured it according to these same measurements. Also its gate chambers, its gate posts, and its archways. It had windows all around. Its length was fifty cubits, and its width twenty-five cubits. Its gate posts faced the outer court. Palm trees were on its gate posts on this side and on that side, and going up to it were eight steps. There was a chamber and its entrance by the gate posts of the gateway, where they washed the burnt offering. In the vestibule of the gateway were two tables on this side and two tables on that side, on which to slay the burnt offering, the sin offering, and the trespass offering. At the outer side of the vestibule, as one goes up to the entrance of the northern gateway, were two tables. And on the other side of the vestibule of the gateway were two tables. Four tables were on this side and four tables on that side, by the side of the gateway, eight tables on which they slaughtered the sacrifices. There were also four tables of hewn stone for the burnt offering, one cubit and a half long, one cubit and a half wide, and one cubit high. On these they laid the instruments with which they slaughtered the burnt offering and the sacrifice. Inside were hooks, a handbreadth wide, fastened all around, and the flesh of the sacrifices was on the tables. Outside the inner gate were the chambers for the singers in the inner court, one facing south at the side of the northern gateway, and the other facing north at the side of the southern gateway. Then he said to me, This chamber which faces south is for the priests who have charge of the temple. The chamber which faces north is for the priests who have charge of the altar. These are the sons of Zadok from the sons of Levi, who come near the Lord to minister to him. And he measured the court, one hundred cubits long and one hundred cubits wide, four square. The altar was in front of the temple. Then he brought me to the vestibule of the temple and measured the doorposts of the vestibule, five cubits on this side and five cubits on that side. And the width of the gateway was three cubits on this side and three cubits on that side. The length of the vestibule was twenty cubits, and the width eleven cubits. And by the steps which led up to it, there were pillars by the doorposts, one on this side and another on that side. The Book of Proverbs My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. 
In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Happy is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand. In her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up, and clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down, and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so. Do not say to your neighbor, go, and come back, and tomorrow I will give it, when you have it with you. Do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strive with a man without cause, if he has done you no harm. Do not envy the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret counsel is with the upright. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools.